In this video, I'm going to show you how I electroform rings, copper rings. And here's just an example of a moonstone ring. First thing you want to do is choose your stones. You can use pretty much any stone that you like. And you just have to keep in mind that some stones are harder than others. And you can look this up using the Mohs scale. The higher the number, the less likely that the acid in the electroforming bath will eat away at your stone. And we're going to seal them as well, so I'll show you that uh, in a later step. So the first thing after choosing stones is you want to create your ring shank. I like to use a 20 gauge wire and you just wrap it around the mandrel to the desired size ring that you want. Just keep in mind that once you put it in the solution, it is going to grow more copper onto the band. So it's going to end up a little bit smaller than what you originally started with. If you're working with a clear or transparent type stone, you'll want to paint the back with a white acrylic paint or a nail polish simply so you don't see the black conductive paint. Now we're going to set the stone and one of the easiest things to do to start with is to use any super glue and I love this spray. It's an InstaSet accelerator spray. So basically you place the stone, you put a little super glue and when you spray the spray it instantly dries the super glue. Once your stones are set, it's time to add the epoxy. And I'm using a two-part epoxy that I'll link below in the description. You'll notice here in this video, I used way too much epoxy and I ended up waste, wasting all of that. You don't need that much for four rings. So what we're gonna do is you mix it equal parts. I kind of just eyeball it. And then you wanna place it around the parts that you super glued just to make sure that the stone is set really well into the wire band. Sometimes when you're working with the epoxy, it can be a little bit sticky and hard to manage. And one trick I find is if you put just a little bit of water on your finger, or on your tool, you can use that to smooth the epoxy and it won't stick. This part is optional, but sometimes I like to add a little bit of texture to my designs and what I'm using here are these little glass beads that I bought, I want to say from the Martha Stewart collection from Michaels. And it came in a little kit with a few different colors. But basically you just dab it on before the epoxy sets. And then when you, after the design is finished growing the copper, it just gives it a little bit of added texture. It looks really neat. Now we have to seal some of our stones. So what this means is that um, on the Mohs hardness scale, the higher the number, the less likely that the stone will be ruined in your bath, basically. So numbers that are high, number seven, such as quartz, amethyst, you don't really have to seal those because they're going to be safe in the bath. Now any stone that goes lower and lower, for example, opal is one of the stones that I'm working with, is a very soft stone, which means that if you don't seal it, once you put it into the, the acid bath, it's going to eat away at the stone and there won't be a stone left. My favorite sealant is clear nail polish, and I just make sure to coat the stone in several layers. Once your stones are sealed, now you're ready to paint your ring with your conductive paint. And basically anywhere that you paint this paint is where the copper is going to be attracted to and where it's going to grow on your design. So you're going to paint over any epoxy and anywhere that you want that copper to grow. You 
can make your own conductive paint or you can buy pre-made conductive paints online. Okay, now we're ready to plate our ring. And I'm going to do one ring at a time. You can find a lot more information on the Facebook group that I'll link below in the description. But here what I'm doing is I'm taking a 20 gauge wire. I would recommend the 24 gauge. The smaller the wire, the better. And you wrap it around this bar that you're going to put on top of your beaker. So right now I'm just making a little hanger for my ring. You attach the black clip to the bar and the red clip is attached to a, your anode that goes on the inside of this glass beaker. And you set your rectifier for one, 0.1 amp per square inch. Which I know it sounds really complicated, but once you start researching and learning how to electroform, it'll make a lot more sense. So eight hours later, and I've checked on the ring a, a several times, I took it out and it's ready. And now what I'm doing is I'm using my Dremel with a steel brush just to shine up the copper. Sometimes after you've plated a few things in your bath, they come out a little bit dull. And so here what I'm doing is I'm just brightening it up a little bit. After shining your copper, you can use acetone to remove the sealant. You can leave your ring nice and shiny, or you can use a little bit of liver of sulfur, which gives the copper a really cool hue, sometimes even turning it completely black. And then I would recommend sealing it with Protected Clear, which will kind of just help prevent the tarnish and natural oxidation of copper. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Check out the information in the description, and I hope you found this helpful.